Good afternoon, amazing realtors. Siobhan DePoke here, principal broker and owner. Wanted to reach out to you guys and make sure that I am going over uh, portions of the contract with you. And all these videos combined, it should be the entire contract. So uh, we're gonna start with, uh, on the left-hand side, number 272, part of the contract, section B, initial inspection. So buyers and or his inspector representatives shall have the right and responsibility to enter the property during normal business hours. This is very important, during normal business hours for the purpose of making inspections or a test of the property. Buyers and his or her inspectors or representatives ha shall have the right to perform a visual analyst of the conditions of the property. Any responsibilities any reasonable accessibilities, installation component, the operation of the property systems, including any controls normally operated by the seller, including the following components. This is talking about the heating system, cooling system, electrical systems, plumbing systems, structural components, foundations, roof coverings, exterior and interior components, um, any other site uh, any other site aspects that affect the property, the environmental issues, so such as uh, radon, mold, asbestos, so they have a right to investigate what's going on or their representative. Also, wood destroying insect infestation, they have an inspection period. If desired by the buyer or required by the buyer's lender, it shall be the buyer's responsibility to obtain a buyer expense wood destroying insect infestation inspection report. The report which shall be made by a Tennessee licensed and chartable pest control operator. So the foregoing expense may be subject to governmental guidelines relating to VA loans. Uh, you'll need to see a VA and FHA loan addendum if applicable. So the inspection shall include each dwelling the garage or other permanent structures on the property, excluding in this line where it allows you to type something in, you would, I on my contracts put nothing. So again, the inspection shall include each dwelling, garage and other permanent structures on the property, excluding nothing for evidence of active infestation or damage. Buyer shall cause such report to be delivered to the seller simultaneously with any repairs requested by the buyer or the end of the inspection period, whichever is earlier. So if the report indicates evidence of active infestation, seller agrees to treat infestation at seller's expense and provide documentation of the treatment to the buyers, to the buyers prior to closing. So request for repairs or damages of any shall be addressed in the buyer's request for repairs pursuant to the sub subsection 8D, buyer's inspection period and resolution period below. So now we're gonna talk about if um, they do perform an inspection or their representative performs an inspection and there are issues, they have to go about uh, letting the seller know about those issues within a certain amount of days. So they generally would have 10 days if you write it in your contract. Again, this is gonna be referencing uh, section 291 of the contract, section D, buyer's inspection and resolution period. So within 10 days after the binding agreement date, and those would be 10 business days, and that needs to be clearly communicated, buyer shall cause to be conducted any inspection provided for herein included but not limited to wood infestation inspections report and shall provide written notice of such to the seller as described below. So here it says, in the event buyer fails to timely make such inspections and respond within said time frame as described herein, the buyer shall have forfeited any rights provided under section seven and in such case shall accept the property in its current condition, normal wear and tear expected. So uh, it's very important that you read all your contracts. You should not only um, know your contracts, but read over them very thoroughly and be able to explain them too, or at least go over the contract as it's written 
with your client, but it's important that you go over it um, because this is a legal document and so it's very important that they have a general idea of what they're signing, but they also have the right and highly suggest and recommend that they have an attorney look over the contract. So, um, in said notice, buyer shall either, in consideration of buyer having conducted buyer's good faith inspection as provided for herein, the sufficiency of such consideration being hereby acknowledged, buyer shall supply seller with a list of written specified objectives and immediately terminate this agreement via notification form or equivalent written notification. At that point, all earnest money or trust money shall be returned to the buyer. So in short, if there are, um, if there are repairs or if there are things, maybe again, wood infestation, or if there are repairs that the seller will not make, and the buyer has notified the seller in writing within the predetermined time period and the seller refuses to make those repairs, then at that point your buyer uh, would be able to get their earnest money back. So um, it also reads, or accept the property in its present as is condition with any and all faults and no represent no warranties expressed or implied via the notification form or equivalent notification written notice. So seller has no obligation to make any repairs. If your client decides that they want to accept the property, being fully aware of all the um, uh, issues with the property, they have a right to do that as well as uh, as long as their lender will finance the loan. Also, here's another or. So, or furnish seller a written list of items which the buyer requires to be repaired and or replaced with like quality or value in a professional and workmanlike manner. Seller shall have the right to request any supporting documentation and sustains any items listed. So the resolution period is resolution period. Buyer and seller shall then have a period of and you determine, you guys come to an agreement and determine how many days that's going to be following receipt of the above stated written list. So it has to be in writing. So you would, in my contract here, I've put five days here. So following the receipt of the above stated written list resolution period to reach a mutual agreement as to the items to be repaired or replaced with like quality or value by the seller, which shall be evidenced by the repair or replacement amendment or written equivalents. So the parties agreed to negotiate repairs in good faith during the resolution period. So you have three options. Again, you can terminate the contract and walk away and the buyer would get their earnest money back. If they decide that the repairs are beyond something that they want to deal with and the seller won't make those repairs, they can decide to take the property as is being fully aware of the issues and deciding to accept it that way or they can furnish the seller with a written list of repairs that they would like the seller to repair and then the seller and the buyer within a certain amount of days would agree of that the seller is going to make those repairs and they would move forward with the contract so again at the very bottom here also one last section 318 this is a area that is a waiver of all inspections uh, we never suggest this box to be checked, but this box must be checked to be a part of the written agreement. If this is the situation, then the buyer, having been advised of the benefits of an inspection, waives any and all inspection rights under this Section 7, included but not limited to wood destroying, infest, wood destroying insect infestation inspection report. So, again, this is page 6 of the contract. And I highly suggest that you read all the contract, but I just want to make sure I just touch base with you guys on this portion of the contract. So again, this is the inspection periods and understanding it very well. So hope this has been helpful. Read the contract for yourself and have an amazing day. See ya.